Hey everyone, COE33 here. Happy New Year's. It's 2020, which means it's time for our annual full game rooms tour. We're going to take a look at both the upstairs game room. That's where we're at right now. This is the retro game room. And when we're done with that, we'll head down and we'll take a look at the downstairs game room. And this should be a good time. I believe this is the fifth year in a row that we've done a full game room tour on New Year's. And a lot has changed this year. If you follow the channel, you know 2019 was a big year for this upstairs game room. And I'm looking forward to sharing everything with you. And we're going to go into a lot of detail. We're going to take our time. We're really going to check out the game room. And uh, it should be a great time. So before we do that, oh, and by the way, Oscar's sitting here in his favorite spot in the game room, which is his Papasan chair. He's in full camo mode there. And But before we get into the full tour, what we're going to do is check out a little B-roll footage that I filmed. And this will be a nice overview of what we have in the collection uh, in both the upstairs and the downstairs game room. So if you just kind of want to see a nice general overview and you don't want to go into the deep dive, go ahead and check out that footage. But if you want to stick around and you want to see everything we have in the collection, you want to hang out up here, maybe play a little pinball, check out the collections, and just enjoy a nice long video, then stick around. And when we get back from that footage, we'll go on the tour. guys we're back I hope you enjoyed that footage now it's time to take the tour so I'd say grab some popcorn because we're gonna be up here for a while I'm gonna go ahead and try to talk about things in detail and uh, show you all the nooks and crannies the ins and outs of this game room both the upstairs and the downstairs game room so why don't we go ahead and just get started and I think what better spot to start than right here with our virtual pinball machine out of all the things that we have up here, I think this is probably the one item that gets used the most. People seem to really love this and gravitate towards the virtual pinball machine. And, you know, I do too. I've really been having fun with this. It hasn't been up here that long, but in the time that it has been up here, I've really enjoyed learning the ins and outs of the various tables, the rule sets, and just having a good time playing a little virtual pinball machine. So why don't we go ahead and talk about some of the details of this particular pinball machine. Um, I did build this recently, and there's videos on our channel that uh, show it from start to finish. Uh, it was definitely uh, quite the journey, and I took you guys along with me on that journey. And I'm super proud of it, and I'm really stoked to have it up here. Now, before this was here, I had a 1978 Bally Fireball Home Edition pinball machine that was up here for about, oh, five years or so. And I uh, had a lot of fun with that machine. We still own it. It's downstairs in the garage. And, but I wanted something that uh, had a little more, um, oh, I don't know, that I could play some of my favorite tables on. You know, I only have one spot 
in the game rooms or in the house I should say for a pinball machine so I thought the idea of a virtual pinball machine made a lot of sense because I could have all my favorite tables on it and I could uh, theme it however I wanted and uh, yeah that was the idea behind it and it definitely turned out really well so this cabinet this is from Rec Room Masters and they have an option to design your own graphics and that's what I did so I went ahead and fired up Photoshop and put together these Jurassic Park graphics which you can see on the side there and then up there on the side as well and uh, really happy with the way that turned out I love the Jurassic Park movies grew up you know really enjoying those I remember going to the original one at the theater and uh, really loving it so stoked to have a Jurassic Park themed virtual pinball machine in my game room now and uh, really happy with this kit it's well built it's got a lot of nice details it's got this uh, actual lockdown bar that's really nice and sturdy and then it's got the controls built in already and uh, really happy with those everything functions great it's got the actual pinball legs there so that's really cool and as far as some of the details of the build I used a 4k Samsung Playfield for the um, main monitor there and that's uh, working out really well great detail and I couldn't be happier with that. I've got a real DMD. It's a color DMD. Um, it's a, oh, what's the name? Pin DMD version 3. And then I'm using a HP monitor for the back glass. That's 1080p. And then up here I've got a statue, a Jurassic Park statue of the T-Rex breaking through the gates there. And that was part of a Blu-ray set that I purchased. And that came included. I thought that'd be perfect as a little pinball topper there. So that's cool. I've got LED backlighting. Um, it's you know all lit up in the back there, and it looks really cool at night, which you probably saw if you watched our little B-roll footage that we showed you earlier. And then there's under lighting on the cab as well. I've got a really good stereo system in here with a giant subwoofer that takes up a good portion of the pinball cabinet. And that's underneath and inside the cabinet, so this thing sounds great. And then I've got a pretty beefy little small form factor PC in there. It's running a 1080 Ti graphics card so that I can push the 4K um, at maximum settings. So everything plays great. It's super smooth, and it's a lot of fun. I just, you know, I couldn't be happier with the results of this. It was worth all the effort. And I kind of curated all my favorite tables. I started with 50 tables that I had on here, but now I have 100 tables. And I'm using um, Pinball X as my front end. And you can see there that uh, it says, you know, how many tables we have on here, I believe. Eventually, uh, there we go, featuring 100 tables. And yeah, Pinball X is working out really well. And super happy with that as a front end. So, you know, actually, why don't we go ahead and just uh, let me throw the tripod down and we'll play a little pinball and talk about it a little more. All right, here we are in the front end and you can use the flippers to go through the different tables. And I've got all my favorite tables from basically everything from the very first pinball machine that used flippers back in the 40s, which was Humpty Dumpty, all the way up to modern era pinball. And I would say my favorite eras are probably the 80s and 90s. Um, I really like the System 11 games, and then of course a lot of the 90s DMD games are some of my favorites. I definitely like these Elvira tables, both Scared Stiff and uh, Party Monster. And uh, the Jurassic Park table is really good. Star Trek, this is a great table. Love it. So is the Star Wars Data East table. Um, I've got the Stranger Things table. All kinds of good stuff. So why don't we go ahead and fire up, well, here's one of my favorites, Arabian Nights. This is a, a 4K table, and it just looks amazing. It plays incredibly well. So why don't we go ahead and fire this up and uh, play a little pinball. So after the table loads up, you just go ahead and press start. I'm going to turn the volume up so you guys can hear it. Beautiful princess was imprisoned by the evil genie. And fire the ball. I am your genie. I will help you.
the tale of the 40 thieves. So yeah, there you go. Virtual pinball. Very cool. And I can't tell you how much fun I have playing this thing. And definitely a great addition to this upstairs game room. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this volume back down. You can use these controls on the front here to turn that down. Alright, and that's the virtual pinball machine. So why don't we go ahead and keep this tour going and move over here to this little nook here. Now this is where the game room started. And the very first thing I put up here was this iCade. And yeah, everything started from there. And I got the iCade at Toys R Us quite a few years back. I have an iPad 2 in there. And it still works great. And it's actually a lot of fun. I really like this thing. So let me go over what we have in this nook. And then maybe we'll fire up a, a game or two on the iCade. So we basically got this really cool Galaga stool. This is an arcade 1-up Galaga stool. Love that. And then we got a couple of these little miniature arcade cabinets. We got a Frogger and we got a Centipede and those are the arcade classics little mini machines that they put out. I think I got those at Walmart. And then this really cool light switch from thinkgeek.com and this turns on the light and it makes sound effects. And that's a lot of fun. Really love that thing. I have a Bluetooth speaker on top of the iCade that uh, if I want to have better audio coming through the iPad or I want to play some music, I go ahead and fire that up and that sounds really good. I have this arcade sign and this is a, a recent addition to this little space here. And it's a metal sign that has raised letters and uh, it's got the Pac-Man and the Pac-Man ghost there so that's really cool. And a clock. And of course we have a blue light up here that kind of lights this little alcove, so that's a lot of fun. And the actual iCade is really cool. It's Bluetooth, so basically you just uh, press a button to initiate Bluetooth. It makes the connection with whatever app you're using. And then you can go ahead, this for example is the Midway Arcade, and it's really cool. This is definitely my favorite app as far as the iCade goes. And you're basically in Arcade, and there's different machines like Defender, and Spy Hunter, and of course if you want to play a game you just go ahead and click on it, it loads up, and in a few seconds you're playing Rampage, and I think I got, oh there we go, and yeah, simple as that, there we go. And you all know Rampage, one of the great arcade games from back in the day and yeah that's Midway Arcade and then you can just pause there and you can exit out and go back to the arcade and there's a whole bunch of games so that's very cool yeah I love the arcade that's why it's still here it's nice because I don't have to plug it in it's wireless so because there's no outlets right here so it actually works really good in this little alcove all right, moving over here, we have our Mortal Kombat 2 Arcade 1-Up cabinet. And I've done a whole lot of mod work to this to kind of customize it and make it my own. And uh, before I start sharing what I did to it, you can see in the background here on the wall, I have these little white faux bricks that I put up. And I did that behind the arcade cabinet and behind the pinball machine. And it's kind of a subtle little touch, but just a, a little custom addition to the wall there. And I thought that was pretty cool. And that was also a recent addition to this upstairs game room. And as far as the arcade cabinet here, I have a Mortal Kombat stool. This is another one of those arcade one-up stools. And then you can see down here that I have this custom riser with this lit up section in front. Let me move the stool so you can see this. There's LED lights behind there and it lights up. And there's the Mortal Kombat logo, so that's really cool. And then I replaced the buttons over here and the joystick. I added a special, or not special, I added a custom stereo setup with a subwoofer in there, so it sounds really good. And then I swapped out the marquee with a lit up marquee. 
And then I added this little Mortal Kombat 2 topper that has all the move lists and all the fatalities and all that on there. So yeah, and also has the LED lighting behind it, of course. So kind of at nighttime it glows and that's really cool. And yeah, I love this thing. It's really cool. I've grown up when Mortal Kombat came out. Uh, you know, I was a big fan of both Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter. So I have a lot of history playing these games as a kid. And uh, it's really nice to have my own uh, Mortal Kombat cabinet now in my own game room. And speaking of uh, Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter, here is my Street Fighter movie poster. And this was signed by Jean-Claude Van Damme. And that's very cool to have. And a big fan of movie stars, action stars from the 80s and 90s, and you know, Jean-Claude and Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger, Bruce Willis, all those guys. So to have something that uh, JC signed is very cool. And it seems right at home next to Mortal Kombat, because it was back in the day it was Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter. So I thought that was a good spot for that. Alright, let's move over here to the slot machine. And this is a skill stop slot machine themed off of Las Vegas. And I picked this up off of Craigslist for real cheap. I got it like for, I think it was uh, $75 or something like that. And it works great. Uh, definitely, it's got some quirks to it, I'll say that. It's really loud. I think that's my biggest complaint about it. It's I, Even at the lowest setting, the volume on this thing is just out of control. It hurts my ears, actually, it's that loud. <laughs> but uh, it looks great. And recently I picked up this Las Vegas, you know, the classic sign when you go up to Las Vegas. Let's see if I can get, there we go. And it's all LED. It's a kind of replica of that famous sign. And I think that looks great. It definitely matches the slot machine well. And uh, really happy with that. And, you know, it's a lot of fun, even though I complain about the volume on it. It is fun. It's nice to have a slot machine in here. And uh, it's definitely a quirky addition to the game room. I may at some point swap this out for a different slot machine. I keep going back and forth on whether I want to or not. Um, now that I have this Las Vegas sign, I may just end up keeping it just because it looks so cool. And, uh, you know, when people are over, I fire it up. And uh, why don't we go ahead and open it up so you guys can check it out, because I don't think I've done this on the channel before. So there's a key that's hooked up to it here. And you just open this guy like that. And then here's the inside of the slot machine. And there's a coin hopper with all the tokens. There's the reels and the various internal components. And I think it's plugged in. Let's see. Yep. So let's see if uh, it has any error codes or not. No, it looks like we're good. So we'll go ahead and fire it up. Get the reel spinning and see if we can hit something here. No, so I'll take some tokens. something there. One more time. <laughs> I think I already got tokens. There we go. All right. No. Wah, wah, wah. But yeah, there's the slot machine. So a lot of fun. I like the skill stop aspect of it. It's cool that you can stop each individual reel like that. And uh, I quite like that. And the fact that it takes tokens is nice. I don't have to have a massive amount of quarters at any time for people to play, so that's good. So I'm going to open this up and turn it off because the fan is pretty loud on it, and I don't want you guys to have to listen to that while we're filming our tour. So yeah, there we go. Slot machine. Very cool. All right. Moving over here, we have a slot machine bank, and it's, you know, it's just a bank that doubles as a slot machine. And there's our original NES and our Super Nintendo. And then here's our Game Boy case. Now, I love this case. I actually, not this exact one, but I had this case when I was a kid. I got it for Christmas one year. 
And you have to excuse me, I thought I had the camera I'm kind of holding that and trying to open this with one hand. Let's see if I can do this. There we go. So I'll open it up here. And look at that. It has all the games. There's my Game Boy. And uh, yeah, talk about nostalgia. This was the setup I had growing up, and I loved my Game Boy. I hauled this around with me everywhere. And all my favorite games are in here. Of course, Super Mario Land, and Kirby, and Tetris, and Robocop 2. Basically, I have this set up like it was when I was a kid. All the same games. Space Cadet. This is basically exactly how I had it when I was a kid. Uh, the only thing I'm missing is right here, I had a Light Boy. And that's like a, a magnifying lens with a light on it. And I did have that uh, as a kid, so I still need to find one of those. Um, but other than that, this is exactly how it was when I was a kid. So that's very cool. Definitely one of my favorite items in the collection. And then behind the Game Boy here, I have some basically hookups for the Sega Master System, the Super Nintendo, uh, etc. So just kind of a nice convenient spot for that. Uh, I have a fire extinguisher there because anytime you're dealing with old electronics, I think it's smart to have... A little insurance policy, a little fire extinguisher handy and readily available. Here are my poker chips in this case right here. And I do love poker. There was a period of time where I was playing a lot of Texas Hold'em. I would go to local tournaments and stuff and uh, I really enjoyed playing. I'm not playing so much anymore. Um, there was kind of a Texas Hold'em craze there for a while. It was anytime you turned on the TV it was Texas Hold'em. And I got pretty hooked and really enjoyed playing Texas Hold'em. I actually got pretty good at it. I read a lot of books on it and uh, had a lot of fun playing tournaments and uh, did pretty well. And then, you know, like, you know, a lot, sometimes hobbies, they just die out and you move on to different things and that's what kind of happened. But I still really enjoy Texas Hold'em and that's actually a, a really nice uh, poker chip set right there. So that's nice to have. Uh, there's our Sega Master System right here. And it's really cool to have an original Sega Master System. And then here are some of our big box PC games. And now I did have the big box PC games over on the game wall, which we'll take out look at in a second. But I recently switched that up and these were without a home. But uh, luckily I was able to find a spot in the game room from them. So now they live in here in this drawer. And it's kind of a nice good spot for them. So that's very cool. I actually have more. They couldn't all fit in there. So unfortunately I have an overflow of all kinds of stuff out in the garage. And then in here we have some of our Sega boxes. We got our 32X box. We got our six button arcade stick box. And then we've got underneath there the Sega Genesis core system box and a little box for a Sega Genesis video cable. So those are where they live. So that's kind of fun. Of course, the Papasan chair. Now this is, I actually have this game room kind of sectioned off into three sections. This is what I consider to be the retro lounge. So I've got the Papasan chair and the Atari 2600 collection. And it's kind of just a spot to chill out. And that's why I call it the retro lounge. Over here is the game wall. And then of course, what we already just looked at is the arcade wall. So those are kind of the three sections of this upstairs retro room. And in this retro lounge, we have this pretty cool light fixture. And then I've got some of my video game soundtrack records from Data Discs. And we've got the Streets of Rage 2 soundtrack. We've got the Revenge of Shinobi soundtrack. And then of course the Shenmue soundtrack on vinyl. And I have those framed and up on the wall. And uh, that's pretty awesome. Moving over here, we have the Atari 2600 collection. Now, I'm not going to go through every game in our collection. Uh, I do have collection videos, though, on the channel. We have a playlist of game room tours slash collection videos. And basically, any collection you see here, I go through and I share every game. And uh, go ahead and check out that playlist if you want to see... Uh, an in-depth look at each individual collection. But as far as the Atari 2600 collection, everything lives on this shelf. We have that 3D printed sign there that says Atari. And uh, we've got some pretty cool stuff. We've got our wood grain Atari 2600. Um, I think it's the 4 switch. And then we have a Atari 2600 Junior down there on the bottom shelf. And some really cool stuff. Uh, you know, I had an Atari 2600 as a kid. It wasn't my first console. My first console was a uh, NES. And then at some point, my cousin gave me an Atari 2600. 
And I loved it. I played it a lot. Games like Barnstorming and, um, oh gosh, River Raid and uh, Jungle Hunt. All those classics. So it's really nice to have all these games. And I still play them. I really like the Atari 2600. And this is a great spot to hang out and uh, throw an old school game in, sit in the papa San chair, and uh, play a little Atari 2600. And of course, right now on the TV, we have a little Toe Jam and Earl going. And this is a CRT television. It's a Sensui. And um, I actually just had this. And when I was setting up this game, I love CRT televisions. I got a really nice Sony Trinitron uh, downstairs in the game room that you'll see in a little bit. Um, I, I, you know, if you're playing old school games, uh, NES, Sega Genesis, Atari, um, basically any retro game, I kind of feel like you have to have a CRT television. If you're going to play like Sonic the Hedgehog or something that you need that uh, response time and you don't want any lag, it just plays so much better on a CRT television because the you know the refresh rate is far superior, and I think it looks better too. I mean, just everything about it. I just I love CRTs, so I have two of them in the collection. And initially, I was thinking, oh, I'm gonna put this Sansui up here, and then eventually I'm gonna track down, you know, uh, something else. But I love this little guy. It actually the picture on it is really good. It's kind of hard to tell on camera. It probably looks a little washed out. Um, and it might flicker a little because of the refresh rate possibly, but in person, the picture on this is really good. Um, there's, you know, no burn in or anything like that. It's just a great little TV. So I'm actually going to keep this up here and it fits this little stand perfectly. Underneath the CRT, we have a Retron 3 and that can play NES, Sega Genesis, um, or Super Nintendo. So that's very cool. And then of course the Atari 2600 below that. And then we've got a lava lamp hooked up right here. And I've, got, I've had that warming up for a while, so it's doing its thing. So that's awesome. You know, you can't have a retro lounge without a lava lamp. <laughs> and then over here, this is kind of a, where we do our, you know, play our board games and stuff. So we just basically move this globe. Um, this globe is really cool, by the way. I got this as an anniversary present. And this is all gemstones. So each continent... And each little section of the globe here is a different precious gemstone. And it's really actually quite incredible. And uh, it's very beautiful. And I love it. And it shimmers and sparkles. And it's just one of my favorite items that I own. And But we remove the globe. And then we have, I basically covered this table with felt. And it's a great spot to hang out and play some board games. And then, of course, we've got a whole bunch of board games under the table here. We've got all the classics, Clue and Life and Monopoly. And there's the Planet Hollywood game, and there's a game based off of Myst. And I actually have a whole lot of board games in our guest room, which that door right there leads to our guest room. And in the closet in our guest room, it's full of board games as well. I didn't have room out here for all of them. So that's the table there. Let's see, what else? Moving over here, we've got our popcorn machine. And this thing works great. You just basically put a little oil in there, some kernels, and you make some nice fresh popcorn. And we've got some popcorn bags and popcorn containers there. So that's very cool. And then there's the bubble gum machine. And this is a great vintage old school bubble machine. And it's got its little stand there. So that's awesome. It takes quarters. And uh, yeah, I really love kind of the old school candy dispensers like that. And it definitely fits the retro lounge kind of aesthetic I got going up here. Uh, this is a uh, surrealist, a Spanish surrealist painter that I really like. And um, uh, yeah, just a cool piece. You know, I, I really like surrealism like Dali and uh, this is Miro and um, just a, a great piece. And uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of art. And uh, so, you know, you'll see throughout my house I have various artists that I really appreciate. And uh, that's one of them. I would love to have something from Dali somewhere in the house, um, as he's one of my favorite artists. Moving down here, the popcorn machine is actually on a really cool wood chest. And inside that chest now, I'm, I'm not going to take the popcorn machine off and show you guys. Um, well, you know what? Maybe I will. I've never done this on the channel. Okay, why not? Now's the time, huh? I'm going to move this stuff. So inside this chest, now when I was a little kid, I wanted to be a magician. <laughs> so I was a massive fan of like 
Houdini and David Copperfield, and there was nothing I wanted more than to be a magician. So in this chest, I'm actually going to put the camera down here for a second, and then I'll scroll down there. Okay, there we go. I'll move this guy just off to the side, like so. And let's see, I haven't opened this up in ages. So in here, it's basically all my old magic props and books and stuff from when I was a little kid. And there's some cool stuff in here. There's some great... This is the first book on magic that I ever got. And Mark Wilson's Complete Course in Magic. And it's just very cool. And I, I love this book. And I've got all kinds of really neat stuff in here. And uh, some great books on the subject. And then, of course, I've got all my various props that I made. And my playing cards. And, you know, some rope and stuff. And, you know, if you want to do the world's fastest knot, you can do that right there. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my magic props. That was the first time I've opened that up in a very long time. So let me put the popcorn machine back on. Like so. A little dusty in there. And then put these guys back where they go. Boom. And boom. All right. Oh, we're out of focus. There we go. So yeah, a little behind the scenes there for you guys. All right, moving on. So let's move over here to the records. I really enjoy collecting vinyl and music in general, uh, cassette tapes, CDs, and um, vinyl records. Uh, my first piece of music, I think, was a cassette tape that was gifted to me of Michael Jackson's Bad, back when that came out. And that was kind of a, one of those pivotal moments as a, a young boy getting a, a piece of music like that and listening to it and just being kind of blown away with what I was hearing. And I've been uh, pretty passionate about music ever since. I play guitar and um, I've always been very interested in music and listening and creating. And uh, it's nice to have this little hi-fi vinyl set up up here. So I've got my various vinyl records, which I really need to do like a collection video on the channel at some point and share all my records. Um, I've got some pretty cool stuff. I've got like first pressings of um, a bunch of the Pink Floyd albums and uh, mostly classic rock. And um, yeah, there's some blues and uh, those are my favorites, classic rock and blues. But uh, there's a nice little variety in there. And then everything here is from the 80s, so I basically pieced this together at thrift stores and Goodwills and stuff. I wanted uh, basically an 80s hi-fi setup, and that's what I got. So what do we got here? The CD deck is a Denon 6-disc uh, tray there. And then we got a Scott receiver. And then, of course, we got the Technics turntable here. And then the Bose speakers, the bookshelf speakers off to the side there. And uh, it sounds great. It's definitely, I've had, I've, if you watch the channel for a while, this has gone over, um, this whole little setup has changed quite a few times. Uh, initially, it was this little cheapo um, kind of uh, record player that you go, you know, you get a Target or something. And then I had a, a different setup with some giant speakers that were just massive, but they really didn't sound that good for how big they were. So then I, I found these Bose speakers at a Goodwill, I think it was. And I picked them up, and they sound really nice. I, I quite like the way they sound. So it's it's changed quite a bit, but I'm happy with it now. It actually it looks good here. It fits the space nicely. It's you know it's all retro. It's all from the 80s, so that's very cool. And uh, yeah, sounds great. And that's what's most important. So I just you know put my records on, sit back in my Papa San chair, and listen to a little music, and uh, life is good. So let's see. Why don't we move over here? So we've got a little lion statue right there. And now we live out in the country. And uh, there's our backyard. We live in Oregon out in the forest. So it's nice to kind of hang out up here and look out into the woods. And then there's the lion statue. And there's this little infinite mirror. It's like a dungeon corridor. Let me turn it on for you guys. So a little light switch. And then it's like 
Let me see if I can rotate down. It's an infinite corridor. There we go. Very cool. And a little catapult. I've had this since I was like 12. It's a pewter catapult. And then a um, World of Warcraft figure there. And this uh, chest. I actually, I used to, uh, when I was, oh, probably 20, I worked at a furniture place. I sold furniture. And every once in a while, there'd be an item in the back that was kind of messed up or damaged that I could get for real cheap. And this is one of those items. And uh, I still need to kind of fix it a little bit. Basically, the doors are coming off, and I just have these little brackets here that I need to uh, restore. But, uh, you know, it still looks very cool, and I've had it for so many years now. And in there, I've got uh, my stamp collection and my coin collection that I've been hauling around for many years now. Moving over here to the game wall. Now this was another recent change up here. And uh, this uh, definitely got a little TLC recently. It looks way different than it used to. This is where we keep the NES or the Nintendo carts and then the Sega games. So that's the Nintendo shelf right there. And then over here is the Sega shelf. And then we've got these posters that we have up here. They're framed. And then we have these really cool poster lights that are very cool. You just turn, they're battery powered, turn them on and off. And uh, I got those, I think on Amazon. And you know, if there's anything you see here that you want to know about, the chances are I have a link to it in my Amazon store, which will be in the description below. And like these shelves and some of the signage and those lights and the poster frames and all kinds of stuff that you see up here. Uh, chances are it's linked to in my Amazon store, and those are affiliate links. So if you click on that link, it doesn't cost you anything extra. But it does, if you buy anything, give a little kickback to TGH. And we use that to uh, fund the channel and make more content, and it's much appreciated. It's a great way to support the channel if you feel so inclined. And if not, no worries at all. And, um, yeah, so those are very cool. We got the Ninja Gaiden 2 poster the Double Dragon 2 poster, the Golden Axe poster, and the Streets of Rage 2 poster with lights above each one. And then, of course, we've got our NES collection there. And uh, I'm not sure how many games we have. Quite a few, probably, I don't know, 150 or something like that. And um, a big chunk of these were actually donated in one of our We Got Mail episodes. A, a very gracious viewer sent us her NES collection and super humbled by that. And that definitely gave us a nice little boost to our NES collection. So definitely check out that We Got Mail. It was a, a lot of fun. Leaf and I had a great time opening that up. And it's nice to uh, have a nice home for all those games. And definitely it's been great watching this collection grow over the years. And uh, now we have more room for it to grow. We can still, you know, probably another 50 games or so on this shelf. And uh, that's something we definitely look forward to. There's still a bunch of games that we're hoping to add to the collection. And everything is alphabetically organized with these tabs that I created. And I actually did a little DIY video of uh, how I made those tabs. And I, in that video, I made a template. Um, and I basically provided the links to that template for you guys to make these for free. So if you really want those tabs, check out that video. And all the instructions are there for you. And then I have these 3D printed signs here. And those are, so I got those off of eBay, I think, and uh, they're very cool. And then we've got some of our various boxed games there. And then, of course, we got our Super Nintendo games down below that, and our Nintendo 64 games below that. And that's our Nintendo shelf. Over here is another item that I got when I worked at the furniture store. It's a little mini sarcophagus, and uh, kind of a cool little item. That I've been hauling around for the last, oh, I don't know, 20, 25 years or so. All right, let's move down here to the Sega shelf. Now, I would say as far as retro games, my absolute favorite, if I had to pick, which is hard to pick because, you know, I love a lot of different consoles, but it would be the Sega Genesis. And we have a pretty healthy Sega Genesis collection at this point, and definitely some great games. You know, there's some highlights here, like uh, Truxton, and Crusader of Senti, and we got Michael Jackson's Moonwalker, and we got Thunder Force 2, and just a lot of great games. And of course, all the classics 
you know, we've got the Streets of Rage games and the Golden Max games and Kid Chameleon, Zombies Ate My Neighbors and Toe Jam and Earl, etc., etc. So definitely have a lot of love for the Sega Genesis. And it's been great to uh, grow in this collection over the years. I think we've been doing this channel for, oh gosh, I don't know if it's four or five years. I'll have to look into that. But it's been quite a while. And, you know, this collection has definitely gone from uh, small to fairly large, I would say, at this point. I think we're... Oh, what, 2,500 games or something like that from both the upstairs and downstairs game room. I'm not sure exactly, but I know the number is pretty up there. I need to do a full count at some point. Um, you know, we've got about 300 Wii games or so, and quite a few NES games and a bunch of Sega games. So it's definitely uh, getting up there. Moving over here to the end of the hall, we've got some of our Sega Game Gear games. And then these really cool... Basically, it's like a timeline of the history of video games. And I printed this out and framed it. And it's basically from like the inception of video games through the 80s and 90s and 2000s to modern day. And that's just kind of a cool little item to come down here at the end of the hall and check out. And uh, eventually, I'm not sure, I might put something else here. I, I think those Game Gear games should probably go on the Sega shelf. And then, I don't know, maybe like a Turbo, if I started a Turbo Graphics collection or something like that, that would be a good spot for that. And then over here is the wall of Dreamcast games. Now, these are all my original games. When the Dreamcast came out 9-9-1999, I was waiting in line on day one to pick my Dreamcast up, which I still have and still running strong. And these were all the games that I had growing up. And um, unfortunately, at some point, I took them all out of their packaging and put them into a binder. But luckily, I still all have them, and this is a great way for me to uh, kind of showcase them even without their artwork they look really cool here and uh it's nice to have all my original games and there's some great stuff here you know shenmue and grandia 2 and the resident evil games and hydro thunder and power stone and um just some great stuff uh skies of arcadia that's one of my favorite rpgs and then i have this little dreamcast sign there that i put it out and framed and uh yeah just a nice little way to showcase the dreamcast games um, here's some more artwork. This is a uh, Wyland, and this is actually a uh, signed, hand-signed lithograph by Wyland. And uh, he's a really interesting American artist, probably one of the more famous uh, modern American artists. And he does these uh, surrealist, kind of surrealistic underwater scenes. And uh, I remember growing up in California, seeing his murals all over the place. So it's nice to have one of his pieces in the collection. And guys, I think that's the upstairs game room. I'm uh, pretty sure I covered it all, and yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that. I think what we're going to do now is go ahead and head downstairs and take a look at the downstairs game room. All right, and just like that, we're in the downstairs game room. Now, a lot of you are probably used to seeing this backdrop right here in our vids. So Leaf and I film the majority of our YouTube videos in this downstairs game room, whether it's like a We Got Mail or a TGH Plays, or when we get back from our On the Hunts, we come back here, we sit at this desk, and we film our videos. So, yeah, this is our setup down here. Now, I have a lot of plans for this downstairs game room. It is not complete by any means. Um, I'm still kind of finalizing everything in my mind on exactly how I want it to be. It's about 30% of the way to where I want it. I, not too long ago, redid this back wall here and I'm happy with that. We have the Neo Geo Arcade cabinet, we have the Xbox display there, we painted this wall red, put up the RGB lights, we added this um, kind of film to the window here and that's pretty cool and then of course built the shelving for the Wii collection and all that turned out really well but I think I want to switch up things in particular over here but uh, all in good time. And if you want to see us make those changes in the future, I definitely recommend, if you haven't already done so, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It's a big help to us, and uh, we're on our way to 5,000 subs. So it would be awesome if you subscribed and help us get to that 5,000 mark. Much appreciated. And yeah, so why don't we just get right into it and start the tour. And I suppose we can start right over here. So as I said, this is where we film the majority of our videos. Leaf and I sit right here. She pulls up a chair. And um, as far as equipment that we use to film our videos, because I know a lot of you ask about that in the comment section, 
we have our audio set up here and we've got a pop filter we've got uh, this little foam backdrop here that helps isolate the sound and then as far as microphones we're using a blue snowball yeti mic and that's actually on the list of upgrades i want to do in 2020 i want to upgrade that mic because when it works it sounds really good but occasionally it lets us down and we've had some issues of audio in the past and I think uh, that's probably the source of the problem. So that's definitely going to be an upgrade here at some point. Um, for the price point, I think it's a really good microphone, but I think it's a, a time to upgrade a bit. As far as the video, when we're in the game room here, you can kind of see it here. We use the, what is the C920 or something like that. Um, it's a Logitech. It's a really popular Logitech webcam, 1080p. And uh, that works really well. And uh, no complaints there. It might be worth uh, upgrading to the Logitech Brio 4K webcam at some point. Um, who knows? That's uh, a maybe because, you know, that webcam does actually work pretty well. When it has enough light, it actually puts out a pr pretty decent picture. And this is the desk setup. Um, I've got my PC that I built a long time ago. This thing's starting to show its age. So this is going to be also on the list of things to do, build a new PC setup, but uh, considering that I built this in, oh geez, 2011 or something, it's doing pretty well, and uh, it's actually really useful. I've got a Blu-ray drive on there and stuff, so it's a, it's a pretty nice little setup. I've got a dual monitor setup. Uh, I've got this Asus 27-inch monitor down below, and then I've got this 32-inch uh, TV above, so that's kind of nice. And uh, then I've got my speakers there. I've got a laptop underneath the Wi-Fi router. And uh, yeah, what else? I've got uh, this little sign that says the Game Hunters and has our uh, sub count, although that needs to be updated. We've grown a little bit since then. And there's my printer, and it's red. It matches the desk, which I painted red. And uh, we've got our little PlayStation 3 display right here on the wall. So that's pretty sweet. And we, of course, got our Game Hunters backdrop right there with Leaf and I and uh, our various game rooms, and that's our wallpaper there. Over here is where we keep the PlayStation 1 collection. Definitely one of my favorite systems to collect for. And we're just about out of room on that shelf, um, or on that rack, I should say. So I may have to maybe go up from there. I'm not sure. I'll have to think about how I want to continue to grow that collection because there's still a bunch of PlayStation 1 games that I want to get. But uh, yeah, awesome system. And then we have a bunch of loose PlayStation 1 games in that binder down there. This is, of course, the Tomb Raider Shrine. And if you guys follow the channel, you know I love me some Tomb Raider. And this is kind of a, a highlight of the game room. So why don't we uh, take a look? Let's open this up here. Voila, there we go. Tomb Raider goodness. We got games. We got statues, bobbleheads, various knickknacks. <laughs> we got the Xbox One console box back there. You can kind of barely see it. We've got uh, Lara versus the Yeti. I actually used that for a little stop motion animation I did. If you follow us on Instagram, you may have seen that. And all kinds of good stuff. I've got a little camouflage backdrop that I put in the background there. And then keep scrolling down here. And we've got uh, some more little statues, the Tomb Raider memory card, the movies, some games. All kinds of great stuff. And of course up here we have our Tomb Raider Collector's Edition, Tomb Raider Chronicles, Big Box PC game. I really like those kind of... Um, Oh, triangular looking pyramid-esque PC boxes there. Very cool. And then there's our boxed OG PlayStation 1. And that was actually one of our better finds on the hunt. We got that for a, um, what was it, for $5 at a garage sale. And uh, yeah, that was quite the find. All right, over here we got a Tomb Raider poster. The little collage that I put together. And then, of course, our Tomb Raider perler piece there that uh, Leaf and I put together, and we made that. And uh, Tomb Raider statue, so lots of Tomb Raider. Moving over here, we got our CRT television with a little Sonic the Hedgehog going on. And yeah, this is our big 32-inch Sony Trinitron television. Really awesome CRT. 
uh, great picture, really good sound, lots of inputs. Um, you can hook up everything from um, component to S-video and of course a composite if you wanted to do so. But uh, yeah, pretty incredible TV and uh, it's amazing. It has really solid picture. It still has a lot of life in it. So definitely uh, cherish this television and it's heavy. It's a beast. This thing was uh, definitely a chore to get in here. But now that it's here, it ain't going anywhere. And then we got some of our consoles down below there. We got our Sega Genesis and 32X, our PS1, one Oscar, <laughs> and we've got our original Xbox, our Nintendo 64, and our GameCube. And of course, this little Wii sign that lives right up here on top of the TV, and it fits in a little groove on top of the TV, perfect. And it matches the color of the TV, so that was kind of a nice little happy accident. Here we've got our GameCube, or excuse me, not GameCube, our Wii U collection. And uh, yeah, we're the, kind of a soft goal on the channel is a complete set of Wii U. So as we find them, we're, we're collecting them. It's a pretty obtainable set. It's not that large. And we're already, you know, well on our way. So we got some awesome games. We got the Axiom Verge uh, limited run Wii U game there. We've got, you know, Hello Kitty Cruisers and uh, a lot of of the collectible games and then of course a lot of the great games on the system like Super Mario Maker and uh, Breath of the Wild and um, Twilight Princess and Super Mario World and all that good stuff so yeah love me some Wii U definitely uh, you know didn't do well but it's a cool system and uh, I really enjoy it so up here we have some kind of our, our miscellaneous knickknacks I guess there's not really any rhyme or reason to this up here this is kind of where I just put stuff I don't have anywhere else to put. But we've got Amiibos, and we've got statues. We've got the Terminator. We've got Sonic. And all kinds of cool stuff up there. Here's our shrine to Mario. And we've got our custom Mario NES that uh, I painted and stenciled. There's a gold Mario on the top there that you can't quite see. And then we've got some of the original Mario NES games. And we've got uh, some Mario, Luigi, and Princess Peach Amiibo, along with this N-Level Display Amiibo holder, which is really cool. And a little Mario Kart RC track, and all kinds of cool stuff. And we even got a little Mario Brothers background there that you can kind of see with the blue sky and the clouds and the question blocks and all that. So that's very cool. Uh, here's our stereo setup, and we've got it hooked up to the surround sound speakers that are positioned throughout the room. And then the subwoofer is down there underneath that Tomb Raider box. And uh, this is, you know, a good way to listen to CDs or watch DVDs on the CRT. And I have a few of the systems hooked up through the surround sound as well. So like the PlayStation 1 is hooked up through that, so it sounds really good. And that's really awesome. And then we've got our GameCube collection. It's one of our smaller collections, so a lot of room to grow there. Um, I didn't have any history with the GameCube growing up, so it's uh, just as we find good deals, we pick them up. But we got some good games there. Luigi's Mansion, and Rogue Leader, and uh, Mario Party 4, and SSX, and Zelda Twilight Princess. And some uh, pretty awesome stuff there, along with a little statue of the Master Sword, so that's cool. Down here is our one and only Switch Shrine, and this was a DIY project on the channel. And this is where we keep all our Switch goodies. And we've got uh, a bunch of games, we've got the boxes for the console, and some controllers, and um, yeah, all our Switch stuff. So that's awesome, some Zelda Breath of the Wild posters in the background there. And uh, really enjoying picking up Switch games. And uh, I, I still play the Switch quite a bit, and Leaf enjoys the Switch, so that's really cool. Moving over to our Wii collection, which is one of our larger collections, and this was probably the first console that uh, we really started heavily collecting for. And uh, when we first started the channel, this was definitely the main focus, and for quite a while. And because of that, we have a pretty awesome collection of Wii games. We got a lot of the heavy hitters, you know, we got the Xenoblade Chronicles and the Fire Emblems and the Zeldas and the Metal Slugs and the Metroid Prime Trilogy Steelbook and Pandora's Tower and the Last Story, all those Operation Rainfall games and Rodea the Sky Soldier and just lots of really cool Wii stuff. 
and I love me some wheat. This is uh, still gets a lot of use, and uh, this is actually our original launch day wheat down there, still going strong after all these years, and it's nice that we still have that. And uh, we put a lot of hours onto that little console, and it still works like a champ, so that's awesome. And we got this little Wii tower here with some games, and of course our controllers there, and then this really fun Wii poster that uh, is kind of cheesy, but I like it quite a bit. And then uh, what else? Super Mario Brothers 25th anniversary there. We got our Wii box, and everything is on this custom shelf that I built and painted red. And yeah, I just think it's kind of a cool way to uh, show off the Wii collection. And uh, definitely one of the highlights, I'd say, of this downstairs game room. So that's cool. Moving over here. This is our Xbox wall display. We got a little Xbox sign up there. And then when anyone sees these, I often get questions about these, um, how I have them on the wall. And these are, uh, they don't make these anymore. It was a company... Uh, locally, and they called them CDs, S-E-E-D-E-E-Z, and they were for displaying CDs, music CDs on walls, and I kept finding them at Goodwills locally. I think the company went out of business, and I, every time I would see them, which was quite frequently, I would, you know, get them for a dollar a box or two dollars a box or whatever, and I basically got them every time I would find them, and I ended up with like ten boxes <laughs> of them, and I still have some more. And uh, it's just a cool way to uh, display, you know, you can, it doesn't have to be CDs, it can be games, as you can see here. And it just worked out really well um, for Xbox games fit perfectly on the shelf. And they're on there really good, they never fall down or anything, so that's nice. And uh, I have some of my either collectible or favorite games on the shelf here. We, of course, got Panzer Dragoon, Orta, and uh, Digimon Rumble Arena 2, Shenmue 2... Morrowind, Toe Jam and Earl 3, Conquer Live and Reloaded, just lots of cool stuff there. And here's one of the, uh, the highlights of the game room, I'd say. This is all the letters that people have sent us over the years. We've been doing this channel for quite a while now. And over the years, people have graciously sent us lots of stuff. And whether it's letters or stuff for us to open in We Got Mail. And it definitely means a lot to Leaf and I. So we've held on to every letter that anyone's ever sent us. And uh, you unfortunately you can't even see them all. They're about three deep in there, and uh, they're all stacked on top of each other. But there's a lot of letters, and this just means a lot to us. So we display it proudly in our little YouTube backdrop here so that you can see it in our videos. And uh, just uh, definitely one of my favorite items in the collection. And then we've got the Atari 2600 sign, a little metal sign above that. And more Xbox games. And I got a lot of love for the Xbox. Um, I remember when it came out, you know, I was a typical poor teenager. I didn't have a lot of money. And uh, I really wanted one. And I couldn't afford it. And I was uh, working at the mall at the time. And on a whim, I went to take my lunch break. And they had like a little, um, it was, they had food, but they had slot machines. It was just like a little, I forget the name of the place. But it was in the mall, and you could play slot machines, and you could eat food. And I got some food, and I put a dollar in the um, video poker machine, and I bet uh, a quarter per poll, and on the last quarter, I hit a royal flush on the video poker machine. And I won like $250 or something off one quarter. It was quite a bit. I, I forget exactly how much it was. But it was enough for me to immediately go on my lunch break over to the GameStop and pick up an original Xbox and some games. And boy, was that exciting. And I remember just loving the Xbox, playing it, you know, just all the time, and just really enjoying games like Morrowind. Um, that game really kind of blew my mind at the time. And of course, like Shenmue 2, because I was a big Shenmue fan when it was out on the Dreamcast. So, unfortunately, I don't have that original Xbox, but we do have this limited edition Halo Green Xbox. So that's awesome. We found that at, a, I believe, a Goodwill. And then our Halo 2 steelbook there. And our statue from uh, Doom. And then down below we've got our Xbox 360 games and our Xbox One games. And here we have a little tower for our Xbox 360 games and our Star Wars edition Xbox 360. Over here is one of my favorite personal possessions that I own. And this is the Neo Geo MVS 2 slot. 
big red Neo Geo arcade cabinet. And I've always wanted one of these. Whenever, you know, growing up, going to the arcade, I always kind of gravitated towards the Neo Geo machines. And I've always been a big fan of Neo Geo. I really wanted a um, AES growing up, but I couldn't afford it. They were like $700, I think it was. And I remember there was a place that let you rent um, the Neo Geo home console uh, per the hour. So you gave them like 10 bucks or something and you could rent it for an hour. And I would do that because I love Neo Geo so much. And I always wanted one. And then, uh, you know, as I grow up and I had the opportunity to get my own Neo Geo arcade cabinet, I jumped on it. And I tell you, these things are heavy. Anyone that's moved to arcade cabinet knows. Um, I think it weighs like 400 pounds or something. So getting it here was quite a challenge. But now that it's here, I'm just really happy to have it. And it gets a lot of use. I have a 161 in one cart in there right now. And that's really cool to have. It, it can be a little glitchy sometimes. It's sometimes, a, I don't know, it acts kind of weird. Um, it'll like freeze up every once in a while if you're not playing it like that right there. But that's just the multi-cart. And it still plays great. Um, you know, it still works just fine. And then I also have some actual original MVS carts. I've got Metal Slug. And then I've got World Heroes 2, and then also I have Samurai Showdown that uh, Neo Turbo Maniac sent to us, and then we got mail. And I still need to get the little display box for that, which I really need to do. Uh, there's our Neo Geo X Gold Limited Edition console. And I picked that up before we had the MVS cab. It was kind of my best way to play Neo Geo without spending a bunch of money on AES. And I really like that thing, and I was thinking about selling it when I got the MVS, but actually those uh, Neo Geo Golds uh, have a little value to them, so I'm going to keep it as a little collector's item, because uh, that's pretty cool, and it's in great shape, and it works really well. Alright, moving over here, we got our Resident Evil collection, and this is uh, displayed in a custom Resident Evil themed storage locker that I painted and put together. And up top we have our custom painted PlayStation um, it's one of the little mini PlayStations with the Umbrella logo on top. And then it's really kind of cool, creepy controller. It's not actually Resident Evil, but it looks very Resident Evil. And then one of my favorite survival horror games of all time, Resident Evil 2 for the original PlayStation. And let me set down the tripod and we'll take a good look at this collection. So I picked up this locker at a Goodwill and it was all beat up. And it was all kind of, the paint was all stripped and it looked really awful and I got it super cheap. And I gave it this custom paint job. Um, I wanted it to look like kind of one of those lockers from Resident Evil. And then I put this umbrella logo in the front there. And then you open it up. And I have a light up here. Like that. And then in the doorway here, I've got this badge. And it's basically a security clearance badge. It's got one of the characters from the games. And it's just a nice little theming touch, I thought. And inside here, I've got all our Resident Evil stuff. So we've got basically all the games, I think. I'm going to have to lower the tripod a little bit more so you can see. So bear with me here. So I have to organize this a little bit. They have kind of fell over. But we've got Resident Evil Survivor there. Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. The original Resident Evil Director's Cut. And Resident Evil 2 on the Nintendo 64. Very cool. And then moving down here. We've got some of the PlayStation 2 Resident Evil games. We've got the Resident Evil 5 Gold Edition for the PlayStation 3. And we've got uh, the PS3 Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City. And we've got some of the uh, UMD movies for the PSP. And then down here we've got uh, Wii games. And um, just all kinds of great Resident Evil stuff. So this is just a, a really fun way to display the Resident Evil collection. And um, eventually I think I'm going to put this PlayStation and these games and this stuff inside here. And then on top I really would like to get one of those um, Resident Evil chainsaws um, for the PS2 or for the GameCube. I don't know if you've seen those. I've talked about it on the channel a bunch and I'm always looking for a good deal on one of them. But I have yet to find a good deal. So eventually that's going to go up there. And if I can't find a good deal on the chainsaw, there's a Resident Evil... For Resident Evil 7, the Collector's Edition had this really cool house statue. I'm like a miniature of the house from Resident Evil 7. 
that would be really cool too. So, so I just want something really kind of nice, a little showpiece for Resident Evil to go on top of the Resident Evil chest. And then uh, that'll be pretty sweet. And speaking of Resident Evil, here is my custom painted Resident Evil arcade stick. And uh, this was an arcade stick I got at uh, St. Vincent de Paul, a thrift store. And uh, it was all beat up as well. So I took it apart, switched out all the buttons, and then I gave it this custom paint job. And then I put that little umbrella plaque on the front there and made a custom two-player Resident Evil arcade stick because why not? <laughs> you know, I was trying to think of what theme I wanted, and I, I knew this is probably where I was going to put it, and it was right next to the Resident Evil um, little collection here, so I thought, oh, I'll just go with a Resident Evil theme, that would be fun. And I did, and there it is. So that is my custom Resident Evil arcade stick. And then here's our little entertainment center with our Wii U and our PlayStation 2. And the Wii U is hooked up via HDMI, the PlayStation 2 is hooked up via component, and they're hooked up along with our little Star Wars Xbox 360 to this very awesome TV. And um, every time I show this on the channel, people want to know where to get it. And unfortunately, I don't think you can get this new anymore. It is no longer being manufactured, and that's a shame because this TV is awesome. Um, it is a new TV that's made to look like a retro TV. It's got a really good 1080p backlit um, display. It's got very cool knobs and dials to give it that retro look. I love the red color, which works really good in this downstairs game room. And the sound on this thing is actually quite incredible. It has the two stereo speakers up front there, and then in the back, there's a big old subwoofer built into the TV. And uh, you really don't need a sound bar or anything with this TV. It sounds really good. And uh, I don't turn it up hardly at all because it's so loud. And uh, I just couldn't be happier with this little TV. It's definitely one of the cooler TVs in my collection. And, uh, I'm, you know, I'm really big into TVs. I've got a whole bunch of them in the house. And um, this is up there as far as uh, some of my favorite in the collection. And then we've got some Atari uh, little wireless joysticks there next to that. And behind the TV, you can kind of see it peeking out there, is our capture card. We have that hooked up to our Retron 5 there. And a lot of times, like if we'll get back from an On the Hunt episode, and Leaf will be playing a game on the Retron 5, recording footage, and that'll be displaying up in the corner of our video. I'm sure if you follow the channel, you've seen us do that quite a bit. And then if we ever need to record footage, this is how we do it. Retron 5, capture card on this TV. So yeah, that's that. Over here, we just have kind of a, this is just a catch-all for, you know, cables and office supplies and stuff that live in that uh, in those little bins there so nothing terribly exciting we got some mario kart curtains over here we have this really cool atari 2600 pac-man cart little art print and uh it's basically like if you took the pac-man cart and opened it up and gave an internal view of it it's kind of hard to see there but it's a, a very cool little print and then our very bright floor lamp which is kind of nice, especially in the winter, because this little floor lamp puts off some heat, so that's cool. And then moving over here, we have our PlayStation games. Starting up top, we've got our PlayStation 3. Let's open this up so you can get a better view. So yeah, here's our PlayStation 3 collection, and uh, it's kind of hard to see them all. But we have quite a few games there, and we have one PlayStation 4 game that we just got, Shenmue 3. With the Kickstarter slipcover, so that's cool. And a little PlayStation sign. And, uh, yeah, lots of PlayStation 3. Basically, these are just all the games that, you know, I got a PlayStation 3 when it first came out. I still have it. still works good. I actually use it probably as a Blu-ray player more than anything these days. Um, but I do enjoy a little PlayStation 3. And uh, there's my favorite games would be probably The Last of Us. I really like this Twisted Metal. I'm a huge fan of the Twisted Metal games in general, and I quite enjoyed this version of it. And, of course, the Uncharted games are some of my favorite games of all time. And then our PlayStation 2 game is huge, or, or excuse me, our PlayStation 2 collection is pretty large. Um, they're stacked, you know, too deep there. And I'm not sure how many games we have, but we have quite a few. And uh, we got some cool stuff here. Definitely, you know, Shadow of Colossus and uh, all these Crash games here. And um, some really cool Shin Megami Tensei, Nocturne, and Star Ocean, and Grandia 2, and Metal Gear Solid, and all kinds of great stuff. 
And then we got our Fallout collection here and all kinds of cool Fallout stuff. We got the bobblehead and we got the, the Pip-Boy and we've got the little Fallout Anthology Collector's Edition, which is very cool and just lots of fun Fallout stuff. We got some caps and all kinds of, you know, a little Rad Roach thing there and uh, lots of cool Fallout merchandise and games. And uh, I do enjoy that series of games. Moving down here, we've got our Indie Boxes. So we subscribed to Indie Box. It was a service that gave you a, a, basically a big box collector PC game in the mail of independent PC games every month. And I, I really enjoyed that service. And uh, yeah, we got some cool stuff. The Axiom Verge big box PC little uh, collector's edition that they released is awesome. It has that little bookend there, that statue you can see right in front of you. And uh, that is really sweet. And uh, Wasteland 2 and the Stanley Parable and all kinds of very cool stuff. And it's nice to have all those. And those are also too deep there, so you can't see them all, unfortunately. Um, we may have to come up with a better way to display those at some point. Um, and here I have just overflow storage. At the moment, that's where all the PSP and Vita games and all kinds of just stuff that I don't have another place in the game room quite yet for. But uh, hopefully that will change at some point and I'll find homes for everything. It's, you know, having a large collection like this, there's always a little shuffle going on, figuring out where to put things. And if you move one thing, you got to move ten other things, and it's a, it's a process. Here are some of our uh, boxes for various games. Um, some collector's units, some statues. Um, there's the Bioshock Infinite Songbird Edition, which is awesome. A little VR headset. Um, that's the Samsung Gear VR I have a Samsung, or not Samsung, I have an Oculus Quest in the other room, which I use as my main VR headset, and I love that thing. Like, it's a huge amount of use. Um, I really like to watch movies on it, probably even more than playing games on it, just because it's, it's great for a virtual movie theater experience. And we're back to our little desk here. And guys, that is the downstairs game room, which means we've looked at the upstairs game room, we've looked at the downstairs game room, We've done the full game rooms tour. So that is it for this video. Now there is more in the collection, of course. We have a large movie collection. Leaf has her Nintendo handheld gaming zone um, and uh, various electronic setups and all kinds of good stuff. So I may consider doing either individual updated tours of all those, or I was even thinking of maybe doing like a, a house tour at some point. I don't know if people would be interested in that, but I've got some pretty cool stuff out in the garage too. I've got some cool cars and things like that that people may be interested in. So that may be something that we do, or I may just go ahead and do individual videos and show off the movie collection, the updated movie collection, and do another uh, room tour of Leaf setup because she has a really cool... Uh, Nintendo handheld setup up in her room and I know people are eager to see an updated tour of that and who knows what 2020 will bring I'm hoping that this downstairs game room gets a lot of love this year um, I still am not 100% what I want to do here I want it to be cool of course whatever it is so I want to take my time and really think about it and do something that's going to be awesome so I hope everyone's having an awesome New Year's. Thank you so much for watching us on our videos and the Game Hunters. And whether you've been subscribed for years or this is the first video you've ever seen, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. And until next time, bye.